Let's talk about the news, which is that uh, the vice president is going to sit down on Fox News. This was just announced by Fox News. It's going to happen on Wednesday. She's going to sit down with Brett Baer. According to Fox, it's her first formal sit down interview on that network ever. Right. She did not do it when she was running for president in 2019. A brief on the Democratic side or as a sitting vice president is significant. It's going to be in uh, Pennsylvania. It shows one thing that she is uh, willing to take more risks mm -hmm. because they believe that uh, this is a uh, a deadlocked race on the margin and she needs to do something mm -hmm. to try and shake this up. It's also a sign of confidence in her and that she has performed uh, pretty well, most people agree, on 60 Minutes mm -hmm. on all of this batting practice that's been going on uh, through podcasts and other things. But look, now is the time. People are going to be voting very soon. Some are, actually millions are. And this is a sign that she is, uh, again, we see so many lessons from 2016. I think this is yet one more example that they're putting everything out there. At the end of this, there's not going to be, oh, she didn't go to Michigan, she didn't go to Wisconsin, she yeah. didn't do this or that. They're doing everything. I think it's significant. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the failing Kamala Harris campaign, okay? A campaign that is tanking fast, especially with men. And you know this for multiple reasons. The main reason being that the mainstream liberal media is in full blow panic mode, okay? They're coping and seething over the reality of the Kamala Harris campaign, okay? Because at first, she started off as a superstar, okay? According to the mainstream liberal media, completely manufactured by the media, of course. And once she started to actually get exposed because the campaign basement strategy wasn't quite enough for Kamala Harris to take a commanding lead over Trump, once she actually started to expose herself doing interviews, people decided that, hey, you know what? I don't think that Kamala Harris is a person that should be leading this country. Again, especially among men, okay? And one of the other reasons why you know that Kamala's campaign is failing is because she is begging former President Trump for another debate, okay? I mean, allegedly, she is even willing to do another debate on Fox News, which is an outlet that she has been trying to run very, very, very far away from until now. This man is dangerous, not to mention Roland. Let's fast forward to right now. He, his staff won't let him do a 60 Minutes interview. Every president for the last half century has done one, anyone who's running for president. Everyone has done it, except Donald Trump. He will not debate me again. I put out my medical records, he won't put out his medical records. And you have to ask, why is his staff doing that? And it may be because they think he's just not ready. Yeah, so I find it to be hilarious that Kamala Harris is now accusing President Trump of doing exactly what she was doing for a month and a half straight when she first announced that she was getting into the race, which is running from the media, not doing any interviews. I mean, this woman still hasn't done a press conference, okay? She still hasn't taken questions from the press in a way that is unscripted and off the cuff, which is something that Trump has done multiple times. Trump has done town halls on CNN. He has done interviews on all of these liberal media outlets. He's done way more interviews than Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. And now all of a sudden, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are doing interviews and they want to criticize Trump for running from the media when that is what they've been doing for the past month. Now, the only reason they're not continuing to run from the media is because, like I told you before, the campaigning in the basement strategy wasn't going to work, right? It, it wasn't working, and they don't get the benefit of the doubt that Joe Biden got. I think that the campaign basement strategy uh, worked for Joe Biden because he's old, okay? And I think a lot of people gave Joe Biden the benefit of the doubt during the pandemic and along with his age. I think that's why it worked, right? He was able to get away with it. Kamala, on the other hand, she's young. She's supposed to be energetic. She's supposed to be smart. She's supposed to be talented, right? She's supposed to be Obama, okay? So she doesn't have an excuse to be in the basement, okay? And also on top of that, she has to expose herself to the American people because although she is vice president, I would not say that Kamala Harris is a very popular politician in the sense that everybody knows who she is, okay? So you have to get out there for people to learn about you and who you are and what you want to do. And Kamala Harris has epically failed at uh, selling herself to the American people thus far, okay? Because every interview she's done has been an absolute 
disaster, okay? And in fact, the more that she gets exposed to the American people, the more that people do not like her, okay? Her unfavorables are going up the more interviews that she does, but she's stuck having to do these interviews because if she doesn't do these interviews, then she's definitely going to lose for sure. So she now has to do the interviews because she has nothing else to lose. And you know this because now she has decided that she's going to do an interview on Fox News with Brett Baer, which is essentially an admission that her campaign is losing, right? That she is currently losing the election because if she wasn't losing the election, then she would not be doing an interview on Fox News, okay? She's going to get a real interview on Fox News, although it is Brett Baer, and I know some people have issues with Brett Baer, but I think that Brett Baer is, is decent, okay? I, I think that he's going to be a lot better than Stephanie Rule on MSNBC or Dana Bash on CNN or any of these other interviews that Kamala Harris and Tim Walz have been doing, okay? And we all saw what happened to Tim Walz on Fox News. Shannon Breen cooked them up. And I'm hoping that the same thing happens in the interview with Brett Baer and Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris's record is indefensible. So I want to react to this panel discussing this upcoming interview between Kamala Harris and Brett Baer on Fox News because Democrats are once again coping with with the fact that she's only doing this because her campaign is failing, okay? This is just another sign that the Kamala campaign is collapsing before our eyes. So let's get into it. I think it makes sense because she needs to speak to working class swing voters, independents, Republicans who are still on the fence. Um, I don't know if you heard from her uh, director to 270, David Pluff, this morning. He thinks they're still gettable. And if those are the persuadable voters, you got to get them where they are. And they're watching Fox News. The people... I mean, really MAGA-type Republicans, they think Fox is too liberal. I mean, they really do. Yeah, I know well, this because I know and, a few of them. You know what? So I Fox think, is really a place for Nikki Haley land voters. And it's actually, I mean, I think there's a misconception about who watches yeah. Fox, right? right? And it's really a lot of different types of people that she might need to talk to. Yeah. Some she might need voters. to talk to. I, I, like Fox. I was actually surprised that she's never done a Fox interview. You know what was amazing to me about this is, you know, she turned down the Fox News debate. You know, they offered a debate. And she didn't want to do it. And now, with three weeks to go, we're scrambling over to Fox News because this campaign is in a full-blown panic. I do want to say a word about Brett Baer. Everybody seems to be crapping on him today. Brett Baer is one of the best journalists out there. He's going to ask her good questions. And if the 60 Minutes interview or The View or anything else she's done lately was hard for her, Brett Baer is going to put her through her paces. And so this is a dangerous thing because he's a real journalist who's going to ask real questions. I think, yeah, I agree with that. And I think that's most likely what's going to happen is that he's going to ask her some really tough questions, but he's not going to be super, super, super tough, but he's going to, he's going to be fair, right? I mean, it's, it's going to be a fair interview and I don't think he's going to allow her to lie to his face in the same way that uh, she lied to the face of Roland Martin and all of these other people in the media who did not push back at all on the falsehoods that she was spewing, right? So, I think that it's going to be a fair interview, right? That's just my takeaway. I don't know. Have people been attacking Brett? I, I feel like people have been well, generally praising him. The algorithms I mean, look, work in mysterious yeah. ways. One of, one of the better Trump interviews he yeah. conducted. No, so there's I, that. I, I think it's really smart. I agree that there could be voters to be had there. And just want to say to Scott that the Kamala Harris campaign is in no way in full-blown panic. Mm -hmm. She's doing exactly what okay. everyone was saying she needs to do. She is now everywhere, what is it called? Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's what she's doing because that's what she can be doing, right? She is expanding the map in a way that I don't think people were expecting her to do. Right now, let's just look at her coalition. What, her coalition her coalition is from Bernie Sanders and AOC to Dick Cheney. Are you saying she played I mean, new that is on? the kind of spectrum that you that you expect from a campaign that is speaking to all American voters. And hold her on. message is yeah, yeah, hold on. The vice president. I'll, I'll hold on. Can, wait, the, 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 she, you oh. said she's expanding the map? North Before Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina Georgia, North those Carolina. Carolina. That's been on the map all year. No, 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 North Carolina. No, 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 my friend. Come on. Hold on. Lord All right, Chair Michael. If the vice president, and we talked about this in the previous segment, if the campaign was doing so well, if she was so ahead in the polls, she would not be going on Fox News. She would not sit down with Brett Baer. I'm almost certain if I were a Democratic strategist, I would be very concerned about potentially putting my candidate 
on Fox News where she's asked a question where she well, doesn't appear to be about well, your candidate. or she uh, doesn't answer I guess, well, I should I, say. I think yeah, we're not going to well. Hang on. There, there, not there's, do there's that, that, that is one way of looking at it. But I mean, I, I think you could also look at it strategically as this probably should have happened earlier, whether she was up or not. I mean, when you look at someone like <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, he's always on Fox. Oh, he's, great. Listen, yeah. he's on Fox. Guys, but he's good I at it. She's been not. A I, think, <laughs> I feel like if we took names off of people's like itinerary, you would look at her itinerary and be like, she's a winner and your guy's a loser. <laughs> Point blank. Why? Because mm -hmm. of the place that she goes from the shade room to Fox. That's range, yeah. okay? Your guy doesn't do that. Your guy goes to safe spaces. We would like to see Donald Trump. 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 But but she would like to see Donald Trump, Trump. No. here the on is, he, he didn't did, did, did he not um, in this did. cycle? Did he not do a time? He wasn't even, even the nominee. Wait, wasn't wait, even, wait a minute. Yeah, that was I mean, years wasn't ago. The I've, seen, I've seen a number of reporting from Axios and a whole bunch of other outlets talking about how Democrats are concerned that the vice president isn't doing enough in terms of interviews, isn't doing enough in terms of campaigning on the campaign trail. Yeah. So I'm clearly folks on your side are a bit worried about where the campaign her, is. I'm saying candidate for candidate, because mm -hmm. that's what we got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Candidate for gan candidate. Mm -hmm. She has done more interviews in the short amount yeah. of time and Really? In, in a more diverse, yes. in a norm, more diverse, like, yes, really, yes. yes. Traditional, what's the, non-traditional. What's the view from what they're not saying publicly uh, on, both, on either side? I mean, I'm curious about how everybody sees this. I think a lot of the feeling is that this is a little too late, um, that she should have been doing this all along, mm -hmm. and that because she hasn't stepped into this fray, like, her base was already activated the second that she was the nominee. They were so tired of Joe Biden. They were so excited. So that really, Kamala Harris probably should have been doing this Fox interview about two months ago and defining herself. And right now, she's just really starting to define her. Because like, what you're seeing is that she hasn't really been able to but separate not, herself but, from Biden. But in all Yeah, so again, you guys see the delusion here, right? I mean, this is just full-blown cope. Democrats are just not living in reality right now, which shouldn't be surprising because they haven't been living in reality for the past four years okay just to be honest with you i mean these are the same people that told you that inflation was transitory the borders closed crime is not out of control i mean they just lie to you about everything so it's no surprise they're lying to you about the simple reality which is that kamala harris has not been doing interviews she has been running from the media and the only reason that she's doing these interviews now is because she's losing and we know that the original strategy for her was to not do any interviews to talk to the media as little as possible because once she actually started to talk to the media, uh, you can see why she wasn't talking to the media at first because she is not good at these interviews. She's only doing them because she has to do them. Now that she's doing them, the Democrats want to come out and say, well, Trump's not doing as many interviews as Kamala. Well, why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? It's because in their mind, they have the false perception that, well, Trump needs to do more interviews so that he can talk more and that people can be exposed to him. And it's like, well, that's actually not how this works, right? Trump is a well-defined politician. Everybody already knows who he is and what he's bringing to the table. Trump has already done all these interviews. He's been on all these platforms that these people are begging him to go on. He's already been there, done that, okay? He's already done it, right? So we already know what we're getting. This is why Trump doing these interviews which is what the media is begging him to do, even if he decided to do them, he's not going to lose support because people already have their minds made up about how they feel about Trump because we've had him around for eight years straight, okay? So there's nothing more to learn about Trump. This is why the derangement against Trump doesn't work anymore because everything that could be said about Trump has been said about Trump and it's been spammed, right? They've spammed it. So again, it, it doesn't work anymore. Kamala Harris, she's not in the same boat as Trump. The reason why Kamala Harris is tanking right now is because when she first got into the race, she was somewhat of an unknown commodity, right, to normal, average, everyday people who don't pay attention to politics. Now, we all knew, because we're educated, that she is a far-left lunatic, okay? We, we were all aware of the extreme policy positions that she had taken in the past, but the American people were not aware of that, okay? So she was undefined. She was ambiguous. OK, and when you you first start out in politics, your favorables are going to be the highest when people don't really know who you are. OK, and this is why I said a long time ago when people were talking about how, oh, Kamala Harris is gaining so much momentum, yada, yada. And I was like, no, no, no. She's actually hit her ceiling. And the reason why you know this is because she hasn't been exposed 
Like most politicians get exposed over time in a campaign. Politicians do not get more popular the more they get exposed. They actually get less popular, okay? That's typically what happens. Their favorables go down, okay? Their unfavorables go up. Well, why is that? Because the more that people learn about a politician, the more they get exposed to a politician, people typically start to find reasons not to like the politician, right? So again, the strategy initially from Kamala Harris was to remain ambiguous so that people didn't have reasons to dislike her. Now, again, the problem is, is that that wasn't going to work because she doesn't get the same benefit of the doubt as Joe Biden got during the pandemic and because of his age. She doesn't get that. So because of that, she had to start to do more interviews. She had to start to expose herself more. And the unfortunate reality for Kamala Harris is that the more she exposes herself, the more that people dislike her, which is what is happening right now, okay? And they knew this from the beginning. This is why she didn't do any interviews. Her doing interviews on Fox News is now an admission that we're losing and that we have nothing else to lose, right? So we might as well go on Fox News. If Kamala Harris humiliates herself, it doesn't matter because she's already losing, right? She, she's not winning, so she, she doesn't have a lead to protect. When you have a lead to protect, you don't go on Fox News, right? She's not making this move if she was trying to protect a lead, right? She's only making this move because this is Hail Mary time, right? This is fourth quarter comeback time, right? That's how they're actually feeling, okay? That's how they're feeling. And Kamala Harris is not Aaron Rodgers, okay? She's not an elite quarterback that can pull off this type of comeback. No, she's not. She's more like Ron Leaf, okay? She's Jamarcus Russell, okay? She's a bust, She's a buzz. She was overly hyped when she got into the race. The media made her out to be something that she's not. Oh, she's the next Obama. These Obama vibes, Obama energy. Y'all remember all that? Just a month and a half ago? My, 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 my. How things have changed, right? Completely different vibes now. And I really do not think there's enough time for her to turn this around. She just doesn't have enough time. That's the reality. It's only three weeks to the election. And she's already said on camera, on these major platforms that, yeah, I'm responsible for what happened during the Biden administration. I would not have done anything different than what Joe Biden did. And when you are supposed to be the candidate of change in an election where people want change and you essentially admit that you would not have changed anything and that you're actually not the candidate of change, that you're going to continue the same old, same old, that's extremely unpopular. You're cooked. You're cooked. And you said that on national television, Trump is now using Kamala Harris's own words in advertisements, right? Words that she can't take back. Now you can't come out and clean that up. It's going to be hard for her to clean that up all of a sudden and try to uh, explain how she's different from Joe Biden or what she would have done differently than Joe Biden. Because everybody's going to know that, okay, well, that's not what you said at first. You're just saying this now because that was the wrong answer. So I think that's the reality of the situation for Kamala Harris. I do not think she has the ability to change the current trajectory of the race because she doesn't have the talent to do so. She is extremely mediocre, and it really makes me wonder how in the hell did somebody so mediocre make it to the pinnacle of politics, okay? Because being vice president of the United States is basically the pinnacle, okay? And she is dangerously close to becoming president of the United States, which is the absolute pinnacle, the peak of politics. And how in the world did somebody reach the pinnacle of politics being so damn mediocre. I think it really is a reflection of how we have lowered the standards in this country so much that somebody like Kamala Harris could get this close to being commander in chief of this country, this once great country that is not sending our best anymore to lead us. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.